Hello and welcome to the future. I want to introduce you to Dr. Samuel Holtzman. I asked Dr. Holtzman to come to Blind because I was hoping that the team would learn how to talk to clients being empathetic. I hope you enjoy the series. in terms of, of sort of product placement is a friend of mine was shooting a commercial for Heineken and they said, we want a 30 second bit. It's going to be internet based. We want the bottle every five seconds and it should evoke a feeling of celebration. I mean, they're clearly picturing every lame, continual <laughs> beer on a beach, party scene, Baja, whatever, spring break, yay. That's basically what they're picturing because that's what they see being successful. 30 second bit. That's something we're gonna play with in internet based, absolutely. Product placement every five seconds. If I say that to you guys, what do you think? What are you hearing? Bottle every five seconds. What's the goal of that? The goal is to make sure that somebody understands very clearly this relates to your image or this relates to this product. When they said we want the bottle to appear every five seconds, what they were really looking for was things that are iconic to Heineken. Picture an EKG monitor. Every five seconds, everything has to align to this image. I mean, all of a sudden, you're playing with heartbeat. You're playing with, you know, sort of streams of ideas and consciousness. You're playing with waves. You're playing with patterns. You're not playing with image every five seconds and how do you fit it into that space. So that's just one concept of starting to pull apart what they mean by bottle every five seconds. It's got to be repetitive. It's got to be the spine. It's got to be the vertebrae that starts to hold this thing together. The simple idea of not featuring the beer bottle, but pull apart this bottle. What are the elements? What's iconic about it? What kind of history of representation can we build off of? Moving away from bottle every five seconds to the elements of it and making sure those elements are running continuously. So in this case, we're playing with four things from the client. 30 seconds, internet-based, bottle every five seconds, and celebration is a theme. Now, celebration, that's one of these code words. They're probably thinking spring break if it's a beer commercial. They've got an image in their mind. So you want to try and get them to paint that scene. Celebration, is this inside? Is this outside? Is this uh, something that's family-based? Get them telling a story. What does celebration look like from your perspective? One of the first things that our generation blew out was this idea of family being blood relatives. I mean, family is, is the family you make, and that becomes, you know, all of a sudden there's a totally another direction for a commercial bit where you've got five separate people, five different instances, all being drawn together, and you get sort of this shortcuts mentality, you know, something like that. So again, it's this weird way of decoding what somebody's talking about in a way that doesn't point out their assumptions, but actually draws out an image. How does celebration make you feel? It's a nightmarish question because most people can't even answer it. How does it make you feel when you get into the car? It's subliminal. So basically, you're asking something that you can't possibly answer. So really, this is the best way to make somebody feel stupid. Yeah. Right? Because I'm just going, should I be knowing this? Because you're asking me that? Versus where you, if you go into this sort of decoding mode, basically you're just staying on the safe side. Just going, what does a, are you, what does a celebration look like to you? And I'm just going, okay, I can ex answer that in a certain way. So part of this is getting that image out of the client's mind and then picking the elements apart. And that's where you drill down. Okay, what's the image? What are the central elements? You can't step into somebody else's shoes. It's actually offensive to even think you can in some ways. That's alienating to say to somebody, oh yeah, yeah, I can put myself in your shoes. 
what you can do is understand your experience, your filter, your framework, and step out of your own and actually start to get placed on the other side, asking a series of questions whereby you're generating somebody else's image, somebody else's framework, somebody else's concept, whatever it is they're trying to get out of a situation. Empathy. Exactly. Exactly. Empathy is understanding your position, stepping outside of your position whereby you can start to listen to somebody else. And then from that, drawing out these elements and then designing or building something for a special group or for others. So if somebody's saying, okay, Thanksgiving, <laughs> all of a sudden it's incredibly loaded and it's alienating. So this idea of empathy becomes one of these actual criteria. Okay, how do we create the widest window doorway possible to get people into a shared concept? Recognizing your own assumptions, your own generalities, and that these are not shared experiences. Being able to therefore start to listen to somebody else from that position of understanding yourself, which is not stepping into their shoes, but is stepping out of your own. And sometimes it does take dynamite. And sometimes, you know, you, it becomes something you simply have to focus on with somebody for a fair amount of time, pretty intensive conversations, or put them in experiences that are uncomfortable. But the idea is to step out of your shoes, listen to somebody else, and then you can't step into their shoes, but you can design a pair of shoes for them that are going to be comfortable, that are going to be what they want, that are going to give them that fit and support. Uh, that's That idea of, of trying to understand what's in somebody's head is, is kind of what's behind this.